Hey YouTube family, it's Raven, back to provide you with another right on time word from the Lord. Okay, now with all prophetic words, including mine, make sure you take them back to the Lord. Okay, so go spend time with Jesus. Make sure that this word is actually for you and this should be acting as confirmation. Okay, prophesy in part. So God's been speaking to your heart about something and then he sends me in to confirm it. Okay, to act as confirmation. No, you're not going crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, and to keep you motivated on your walk with Jesus Christ, okay? So yes, I do, this is a kingdom spouse message. This is not a twin flame message, okay? So I've had a few people stumble upon my my channel. Actually, uh, quite a few stumbles in the last week. <laughs> and in the comments section, I'm getting a lot, of, a lot of new age comments, a lot of twin flame comments. So... I talk about this in my description box, is in all my videos, and also in my my bio, on my 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 you where you, where you get to add extra stuff about yourself. And I said it in a few videos, but uh, hi, I'm Raven. I'm not a fortune teller. <laughs> okay, I don't I don't practice any kind of new age practices. None of them. Okay, I believe new age occultish practices to be against the Lord. So I believe they are demonic. They are against God. They're, most of them are counterfeits to what God is actually trying to do. Okay, so the kingdom spouse movement, kingdom God ordained movement is a supernatural real movement of Jesus Christ. Okay, so Christians out there who are skeptical, yes, it is a real thing. The Holy Spirit is really doing a move, okay? Now the twin flame movement is a counterfeit to that movement. So if you've come across my channel and you are in the twin flame movement, stay. <laughs> stay with me, okay? There's a reason why the Lord has popped my face up on your feed, okay? Because he wants to he wants to call you out of those occultish practices and he wants to give you something better. He wants to give you something better. So please don't just dip out and let yeah, please don't just dip out uh just because I said you know, I believe that to be demonic. Just give me a chance. <laughs> okay, hear me out. All right. I'm not against you. I'm for you. I'm for you. I want you to get saved. I want you to have, uh, to have, I want you to get saved. I want you to make it into heaven one day, but I also want you to have an abundant life here on earth. Okay. And that's only found through the person of Jesus Christ. I also have a salvation prayer in my description box. You can go, if you're not saved, you go check that out. Okay. Always check out my description box. I always got stuff up in there. Okay. But this is a kingdom spouse message. So let's get into it. So why is my kingdom spouse ghosting me? I always hear the word ghosted. Such a trendy word. I actually uh, had to go get the definition of what ghosting was. It's kind of a newer, a newer term to me. I've been out of the social media world for, I was kind of out of the social media world for like a decade. So I was like, ghosting? This is, what does this mean? Okay, so definition of ghosting. I'm going to let you know if you, if you didn't know. A lot of you already know, but suddenly ending all communication and avoiding contact with another person without any apparent warning or explanation and ignoring sub subsequent attempts to communicate. Okay, so how the Lord gave me this word, and then we're gonna get into this word. So in December, January, I'm starting to see the word, hear the word ghost on repeat, and then images of ghosts. So that's how the Lord speaks to me. I see, I hear, okay? So he's trying to give me a message. It's like, a, it's as though I am putting together puzzles all the time, I call it. Um, me and the Holy Spirit, we're gonna to put together a prophetic puzzle, and once I get the puzzle together, I get to deliver it to you. Okay, I get the picture and I get it delivered to you. So what he does is he'll give me repetitive words, repetitive songs, rep any kind of repetitive image, something I'm hearing, I'm seeing, he's, he's trying to get my attention. Okay, and then I say, okay, well, what does this mean? I have to seek him. We got to come together. Me and the Holy Spirit hang out and we figure it out, right? And this is good for me because this strengthens my relationship with Jesus Christ and this is what he calls me to do. Okay, so December, January, I'm getting ghosts. And when I say I'm getting it everywhere, okay, guys, it's popping up on my YouTube. I'm just ghost, ghost, ghost. Ran the most random places, ghosts. But I think I wrote some of them down. I get the JB song, Ghost, all the time on my YouTube. If you'll be listening to a song and it's like, ghost, you know, like ding, 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 ghost. And I'm not, I don't, I don't go looking for signs and wonders. 
I don't do it. I seek Jesus Christ and he puts everything right in front of my face, okay? I don't do that. And you don't need to do that either. You go looking for signs and wonders, you're going to find things you don't want to find, okay? You can get tripped up. Seek Jesus. And then everything else is going to follow you. Okay. And then, so my kids, my kids are always confirming things for me. Always. When I need my final confirmation, it's going to come out of the mouth of babes. It's going to come out of my baby's mouths, all right? Augie and Roz, who my sister she combined their names yesterday and she goes, Roggy. So I should start referring to my children as Roggy. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But okay, they always gonna confirm it. So I remember one of the times when I'm like, Lord, is this from you? And then they're out in the living room fighting over a movie to watch. And they're, Roz is going, I wanna watch uh, Casper. And August goes, I wanna watch Ghostbusters. <laughs> I'm like, you ain't watching either one of those. You're watching no ghost filled movies. <laughs> it's downright demonic. Stop it. <laughs> oh gosh. But so many, so much ghost, so much ghost. I was getting just flooded. Like I got, I think I got ghost more and, and think it was too, because it took me so long to figure out what it meant. Okay. And this is what it meant. They're ghosting you. Your kingdom spouse is ghosting you. Okay. So, all right. This is what the Lord said. Ghosting, ghosting, ghosting. Okay. They are ghosting you. So your kingdom spouse is ghosting you because they are being haunted by the ghosts of their past. Okay. What did this song? What did I write song for? I wrote a note on here. I don't even remember what it meant. Okay. So your kingdom spouse is ghosting you. Cutting off communication. Where'd they go? Ma! <laughs> Because they are being haunted by ghosts of their past, okay? And because of this, it's having them act some type of way, okay? Right, so I believe, and here's my apologies to, to all of you on this journey. I believe I was supposed to release this word back in January when I was getting all of these confirmations. And I was, that's the Lord actually had me start my channel in January and... That was something I think he wanted me to get out to you guys because a lot of you have been getting ghosted. You're led to this video. You're getting ghosted by your kingdom spouse. And it's really hurtful. It's really hurtful. So I'm sorry that I didn't get this out to you back in December, January when some of you were probably being ghosted. Okay. But so he, re he started repopulating it again about a week ago. So I'm getting the ghosts again. My YouTube's getting blown up with ghosts. My kids are talking about ghosts. Okay, I'm seeing ghost random places. Yesterday, I get in my email and it's ghost shampoo. I guess there's a, a shampoo called ghost. I actually seen it um, at a store once too. That was, okay. So it's just, Lord's putting it right in front of my face. Ghost, ghost, ghost. And then I'm thinking, Lord, do you want me to deliver this word? So last night, my son, <laughs> Og Dog, Prince Augustus has his, his spring concert. <laughs> And I kid you not, they do a whole thing on, it was called The Phantom. And it's a whole little mini play with songs and it's all about ghosts. I was gonna, I tried to take a picture of the sheet to get some of the songs. I thought there might be some connections, but the whole thing was about ghosts. And we get home and my son, they wanted to watch a movie. So I said, it's a special night. Well, well okay, let's watch a movie. And August comes into the room I was in and he goes, Mom. Is this a scary movie? Does it have ghosts in it? <laughs> so it's just constant, constant, constant the ghosts, okay? About the Phantom. Yeah. Okay. So your person is ghosting you. So when I was back in January, let's dial it back a little bit. One of the big confirmations was this song, which I actually I was writing this up and the Lord brought this song back up into my spirit. So it's a Carrie Hilson, knock you down. Maybe some of you guys, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of that kind of music. And like always, I, I'm talking about a secular song. I'm talking about movies. I'm never recommending you go watch them. Okay, to each their own conviction. Uh, a lot of these movies and songs I don't necessarily listen to or watch. It's just how the Lord's get, getting the message to me. Okay, because He can do that. He can. He can. God can deliver a message however He wants to. He's God. He's King. He He does what He wants. Okay, so this Carrie Hill song, Hill, Carrie Hill song, song, <laughs> knock you down. All right, I'm gonna read. 
I'm gonna read one of these lyrics because I remember very clearly being up in the gym, having my earbuds on, this song pops on my my feed, and I go, I would never listen to this song. So I get on Spotify, I'm listening to it just to see if there's anything in it. Just Lord. Okay, and so the song, one of the lyrics in this song, as I'm getting all these ghosts, right, is tell me now. I think this was Kanye singing. I think this was Kanye singing. He goes, tell me now, can you make it past your Caspers so we can finally launch off into NASA? <laughs> I said, no way he just said that. <laughs> because a lot of you are seeing NASA stuff. A lot of you are seeing launching, three, two, one, one, two, three. Because you're getting ready to launch into your mission, your big mission, which is marriage. <laughs> this is an old song, your Caspers. Can you make it past your Caspers? Can you, uh... You know, can you get over your past so we can move forward and launch into the things, you know, launch into this relationship? It's just too good. It's just too good. Okay, and that song was, when it came up too, it was four minutes and 44 seconds long, which was why I originally thought the Lord brought it up. Some of you are probably seeing that number as well. Okay. All right, so your kingdom spouse, they need to be healed and delivered. They're being haunted by their ghosts. They're being haunted by the things of the past, things that they have done in their past, things that they have experienced in their past. A lot of them are dealing with trauma. I get the word trauma all the time. I get the word broken all the time, which is constant. Pro broken, trauma, unhealed, bleeding. Bleeding, I see that word a lot, like bleeding out. I'm bleeding, <laughs> you know, just constant. So they're they're in need of healing and deliverance okay now if this was a normal relationship if this was a normal relationship the lord would never have you remain in this relationship right like they're ghosting you they're acting some type of way they're disrespecting you the lord would never call you if this was just a normal christian relationship to stand for that because he, he would he'd say they're unhealed they're they're not ready for a relationship move on to the next person that's what makes these, this one reason that makes these kingdom spouse relationships set apart, okay? And that's where it confuses a lot of people. Well, why would God tell you to stand for them if they're not healed and delivered? Well, because God gave you a prophetic word. God gave you a promise. He's showing you the future. This is going to be your spouse. They're not ready yet. I need you to stand in the gap for them and pray for them. So if you're wondering why, that's why, okay? You're you're seeing you're seeing what they're going to become. The godly man, godly woman that they're going to become. They're not there yet. They have to go through this healing and delivering process. And the Lord has anointed and appointed you to help aid in that. And it's primarily going to be done through your prayers. Through your prayers. Yes, he's going to call you to give them words of encouragement, speak into their life directly. But a lot of you on this journey, you're going to be spending a lot of time in separation. Okay. So just be prepared for that. If it hasn't happened yet, there, there's going to be st strategic separations. You're going to be separated. That's to protect you, protect them. And it's just part of the process. It's just part of the process. And so you're, the way you're fighting for them is, through prayer. Your primary force of fighting is through prayer. So you're their personal prayer warrior. Okay. So, and this is going to strengthen your prayer life too. This is helping you. You're not just helping them by praying for them. You, this is helping you strengthen your faith and helping you walk in faith. You just think about it now. You've been on this journey. Some of you are brand new to this journey. Some of you have been on it a long time. Look back. Just look back. Look how far you've come in the spiritual realm. You are strong. Your prayer life is stronger. You're closer than you ever have been with Jesus Christ, okay? You're learning how to fast correctly. You're learning how to pray better. You are learning more about the Word of God. The Word of God is becoming more alive to you, okay? So the, you, this is beneficial to you too, and this is very beneficial to your future ministry. But they need to go through that healing and deliverance process, and you are going to help them by praying for them. All right, let's see. They want... Okay, so I had a word I released probably like a month or two back and it was called run to you. I'm going to link it in the description below because I do believe it is connection to this because when I was writing up this word, I got a clip from a, a video that the Lord had populated for that run, run to you video and it was a man and it was, a, it was a TV show, okay? And it was just like a real, do you know what I'm talking about when it's, you know, 
on YouTube, they have like a show or a movie and then they have a song in the background and it takes like a bunch of different clips and you can understand the message without really watching the whole show or the movie. I get those a lot, so I reference those a lot. And the Lord gave me one and it was about a man. He was a really broken man and he had an addiction problem. And in the, in the show, he was saying, I can't be with myself right now. How, how could I be with somebody else? And like I said, I talk more about it in that video. And, and pretty much what he's saying is he's got so much unhealed trauma. Like he can't be with himself. How, how could he be with anybody else? And he's running. And it, and it literally shows him clips of him like running. And that was the whole message of the word is running. Your person's on the run. They're running away from you. They're ghosting you. They're running away because they're trying to run away from their past. They haven't got to the place to, to go to Jesus fully, surrender to Jesus Christ, and allow him to do that healing and deliverance work that only he can do. He's a great physician. He's a great deliverer. You're helping aid in that, but ultimately they have to be surrendered, submitted to him. So, I mean, that's the bold prayer that you need to be praying. Whatever it takes, Jesus Christ, to get them fully surrendered and submitted to you. you Gotta break a leg, break a leg. I'm just <laughs> What'd you say? I mean, just surrender it up. Whatever it takes, good, bad, ugly, to get them in alignment with your will. Okay, and he's gonna give you other prayer points too. So, yeah, in that video, so that's why they're running away from you. Don't take it personally. Don't take the ghosting personally. That's big. All right. Also, in that clip was the song The Scientist. So, if a lot of you are hearing the song The Scientist, I had a word on that too. This is just confirmation, okay? So, I wrote, I don't believe in friendly ghosts because we're going to talk about Casper. <laughs> I do believe ghosts, paranormal activity to be primarily demonic, guys. I don't let my kids watch ghost movies even though they think they can, they can watch it. I don't let them. <clears throat> All right, so here's your hope. Let's go into some hope and then we're going to go into some scriptures and then we're wrap this up, okay? So I recently got a movie clip and it was Casper turns into a human. And he's dancing with the Casper the Friendly Ghost uh, movie from the 90s. If you haven't watched it, that's okay. That just probably means your parents were <sighs> good parents and didn't let you watch a bunch of bad movies. Okay, <laughs> but there's, I can't remember what her name is in the movie, but girl and boy dancing. Casper was a friendly ghost. And for for a dance he gets he's able to turn back into a human and they enjoy this dance together and he populated that up on my timeline okay and so what the lord is saying the hope is they're not always going to ghost you they are going to turn back into a human and they are going to come back into your life okay the ghosting is going to cease they are going to come back into human form and they're going to stop acting like that because it's rude Okay. Yeah, they are going to make it past their Caspers and fly into the stars. <laughs> That's what I wrote. Doing the work. They are going to do the work. Okay, so Casper was released. The movie Casper was released on May 22nd of sometime in the 90s. But the Lord had me take 526, all right? <clears throat> and this is how we know that your person, and now this is, I think for a lot of you, this is about your husbands a lot of you watching this are female now if you're a male this could still apply to you just turn it around but a lot of you are females that's just how a lot of these journeys are working out this just a lot of men on the run man on the run there's a lot of a lot of them are uh, men okay so ephesians so he led me to ephesians 5 26 and it says to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Okay, so Ephesians 5 is primary about, primarily about husbands loving their wives. And this is talking about, uh, I think it's the husbands teaching and helping their wives grow. That's primarily what that scripture is about. And it's a reflection of Jesus washing us and cleansing us and helping us grow, right? Because that's what marriage is, big illustration of... Jesus Christ loving the church and we get to bring that illustration to life. Amen. Wow. What a responsibility. What an honor. Take it seriously. Okay. Take it seriously. So that could be a scripture you look up, meditate on. 
All right, your husband, he is going to come back. And not only is he going to come back, he's going to stop ghosting you, treating you disrespectfully. He's going to come back leveled up. <laughs> I've seen this ministry and they had this shirt. I think it was DLM, Christian Lifestyle. I think it was Daniel Moritz. And it was like, man up. <laughs> this shirt just says man up. I said, that's too good. <laughs> that's awesome so a lot of your men are gonna man up okay they're gonna stop acting immature and ghosting you because I wrote that somewhere too that it's really immature it's a sign of immaturity to ghost people yeah they're doing it because they're afraid and they're hurt inside but it's it's a form of immaturity it's a it's a it's, it's a form of immaturity and it's a form of just bad communication skills so that's something you need to pray about too because communication is insanely important i mean your whole relationship with jesus christ rides on the fact uh rides on how well you guys are communicating as in you're taking that time to speak to him and then listening for him to talk back to you right i mean what's what's the key to a successful relationship with jesus christ communication what's the key in communication as in like him speaking to you through his Holy Spirit, primarily through his word, through the Bible, okay? So like you're communicating with your creator when you're reading the scriptures. You're listening to what he's saying to you, or you should be. That should be your focus when you're reading the word. Okay, I shouldn't go into it with a religious mindset. So communication should be a, a, a really important thing in your relationship um, as a husband and wife, okay? So they're going to come back and they're going to be a better communicator. They're going to man up. They're going to mature and you want them to. You don't want them coming back before then. All right. Other prayers that you could say for this, if you're thinking prayer points, prayers for them. Ephesians 3.19 is going to pray for them to receive the love of Christ. A lot of them are feeling very unloved. They don't know how to receive love because of the unhealed trauma in their lives. So they're not going to know how to love you if they haven't first received the love of Christ. So praying for them to receive the love of Christ. Ephesians 1.18 and I actually got 118 earlier too, uh, as one of my repetitive numbers. So Ephesians 118 is that their their hearts, the eyes of their heart would be enlightened, opening up, revelation, seeing things. Okay, praying that scripture over them, and then as Ezekiel, I think is 36, 32. <sighs> I might have that Ezekiel. So it's the scripture of turn their flesh, their heart of uh, stone into a heart of flesh. So praying that they're their heart would just be softened, softened so that they could, you know, that's hard because of the hurt that they've experienced in their life. They've hardened their heart because of the hurt. They need to go to Jesus Christ to get that, for him to take out their stony heart and get in a heart of flesh. But they have to go to the Father first, you know, pour their heart out to him, be vulnerable to him, and then they're going to be able to come back to you. But they, for everything, they have to go to the Father first before anything. So you need to... Your prayers need to be pointing them in the direction of Jesus Christ. Okay, they need to run to Jesus before they can run back to you, or else they're gonna keep they're gonna keep acting like Casper. <laughs> now, you guys, no, this is not what I'm saying. All right, don't be calling your person Casper. <laughs> don't be. You can text them. You're gonna be like, okay, whatever, Casper, <laughs> and they're gonna be like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that's. It would be funny, but it wouldn't be God honoring. <laughs> All right. And so one of the other confirmations, ghost, that they're ghosting you. I kept getting that, a movie clip from that movie. I think it was actually called Ghosted. It has, is a newer movie about some girl ghosting some guy. And then they, I don't know, he goes and finds her. I think she's like some spy or something. I didn't, I didn't watch the movie. Not going to watch the movie. Seen the word ghosted. It was a whole movie about some guy being ghosted. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. <laughs> that movie was an hour and 50 second minute, 50 seconds minute, an hour and 56 seconds long. Got it. Okay. And so the Lord led me to Genesis 156. So 15, six. Okay. And it says, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Okay. So that whole scripture is about faith okay Abraham was given a promise he went on a journey the journey was challenging and he had to go to the Lord and be like Lord refresh me renew me I'm I'm doubting here you told me you're gonna give me a son where's my son my wife she's getting old 
she's past them childbearing years, you know, and the Lord said, did I not give you a promise? I'm a God who doesn't tell lies. All right. So the Lord is saying, you know, Abraham believed in the Lord with his, with his promise. Believe the Lord. This has been a hard journey for you. Okay. It is not easy to be ghosted by people and you want to be done with them. And the Lord says, or be disrespected, be treated any kind of way. And the Lord says, no, I need you to stand. I need you to continue to stand and be faithful to this person. And I need you to love them like I would love them. All right. That's not an easy thing to do. Okay. But that's exactly how the Lord is using you to show his agape love on this earth. All right. It's a big responsibility. Take it seriously. But get in the word. The Lord is saying, get in the word. Read about these stories, these testimonies of these people who had to walk in faith. Abraham was one of them. All right. And it is, it is faith in God that makes people acceptable too. So, you know, it's our faith that, that saves us. Also, God gives us our faith. I know that, but you know, ultimately it's, it's, we're put, we're placing our faith in Jesus Christ and that's what gets us saved in the first place. And so Jesus is asking you to place your faith in him regarding this promise as well. Okay. And some of you are seeing the number 11. Okay. And the Lord wants you to go read. Hold on. Let me check this. Let me actually read one of these to you. Let me get in the word quick. <sighs> my battle Bible. Yeah. Always prepared in my car. Yes, so some of you are seeing the number 11. Now, this could be when you're getting numbers, you need to seek Jesus on what that number means, okay? And he's going to confirm it. A lot of times it's a scripture or it's in Strong's Concordance or it could be other things, but regardless of what it is, it's always going to point back to him. Now, if it's not pointing to him, it's not from him, okay? Angel numbers are demonic. But I'm not saying that one number is everything because they're his numbers. He uses them how he wants to. But some of you are seeing the number 11 and what the Lord is saying is he needs you to be walking in faith in this hour and to pray for him for an increase in faith and to go read Hebrews 11, which is the hall of fame of faith. And I've been actually seeing, he's just bringing this to my mind right now. I'm actually, <laughs> it's cool when he does that. I've been getting that song hall of fame standing in the hall of fame like all the time spotify this and i'm like what does this mean okay faith hall of fame those who were had to, who had the faith okay who had the faith and you he's he's calling you up you need to be faithful to this promise Pro you need to be faithful to this promise. You need to walk in faith. You need to go read Hebrews 11 and allow the Lord to minister to your spirit about faith. Okay? All right. Uh, the Lord is also saying don't run after your person. If they're ghosting you, uh, just this was probably a season. <clears throat> When it comes to this journey and how to respond and react with your kingdom spouse, you really have to take it day by day. You really have to take it day by day because one day the Lord can say, no contact, step away. The next he's to say, you need to call them up right now and pray for them. Okay, so day by day, you need to be sensitive ears. Okay, sensitive little sheep ears to hear your good shepherd on, on how he is telling you to walk because the journey for uh everybody's kingdom spouse journey is different they're all quite similar in a lot of the areas you know the prodigal is coming home and that that's why the lord has risen up voices to speak into your situations because a lot of situations are similar but they're all very different in their timing and how to approach them very personally so this make sure you take this to Jesus Christ because this could change okay but what he's saying is like don't run after them if they're ghosting you don't continue to just give 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 just kind of step back you know walk out that door like I was talking in one of my videos bad liar like kind of walk out that door for a season until the Lord opens it back up for communication and this is to protect you and to protect them they, they got to have they got to have that one on time with Jesus Christ. They got to have that one on time with Jesus Christ. Okay. Like they do. They got to just him and them for a season. And you're backing it up with prayer. You're partnering with Jesus Christ in prayer. Okay. But don't run after them because it's going to exhaust you. And it's probably going to just tire you out, make you angry. And your biggest enemy right now 
two. I said you got two big enemies right now. Doubt and anger. Doubt and anger. You need to be praying against those. Doubt that this is really coming from Jesus Christ. Doubt that he's going to fulfill the promises. Okay, so you're binding that spirit of doubt. And then anger. Do not get angry at your kingdom spouse. Okay, frustrated. Know when to walk away. Before you get angry, get in your flesh. Say some things you don't need to say. And just get yourself all, no, choose, make the decision to not be provoked to anger. Make the decision to walk in joy and peace and surrender it to Jesus Christ, okay? You gotta, that's an active decision you need to be making every single day. Do not be provoked to anger. Step away before you get to that place. And if you're consistently giving, 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 they're ignoring you, they're ghosting you, you're gonna, it's, it's natural to get upset. It's because that is rude. That is rude. Okay, so make the choice to not get angry, to step away. And don't take it personally, okay? Focus on your own kingdom work and still pray for this person. Don't, <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I do have, <sighs> withholding, withholding communication is a form of, a, of abuse in a relationship. I, I believe that to be true if you're actively doing it. If you're doing it because you're angry at the person and you're saying, I'm just not going to talk to them. Like, you're, it, like it's a form of manipulation. It's a form of control. It's a form of abuse to not communicate. Okay, so you still need to be praying for your spouse. Yes, they are in a form abusing you by not communicating with you, withholding that communication regardless of why they're doing it because they're hurt all of this or that See, we have the compassion for them have compassion for them they are going through a lot right now but it's still disrespectful um have grace for them in that area but don't do the same to them by saying well they're abusing me i'm not i'm not gonna pray for them they don't want to talk to me <laughs> well i ain't spending time praying for them don't don't get nasty like that okay even if it's just a simple prayer lord your will be done praying one scripture over them if that's all you can muster up that's fine make sure you're you're taking that time to still pray for them because that's part of your assignment that's what the lord has tasked you to do because your kingdom marriage is a lot bigger than you it is it's a lot bigger than you and you've been you've been called that's part of your calling you answered the call you're faithful to answer the call in your life and your call is to stand for them in prayer even if you're upset at them and just seek the lord on it too because you guys he can do abundantly more than we ask or think he can definitely help you work that anger and that frustration out with your person and get you in a place of peace not only can he do that he wants to do that so go to him and, and be vulnerable with your frustrations because he knows that you're frustrated. Go to him with that. You can be personal with your father. You can go into the throne room upset. Okay, don't be disrespectful. Don't cuss him out or anything. But, you know, going into the throne room, it's like going to a big counseling session. You guys been to counseling? You go there and you can be yourself. <laughs> they want you to be. So they can help you walk through your problems, all right? So Jesus is the great counselor. You can definitely go into the throne room and and express your heart. And he wants to because guess what? He already knows what's going on in your heart anyways. So just speak it out, get it out. And he's going to help you get to that place of peace and joy. And he's going to help you continue on on this journey. And you know who else can help you continue on on this journey? <laughs> Shannon from Prophetic Marriage Ministries. Okay, so I was writing this up and the Lord was, he, he brought her to my spirit because Shannon's whole ministry is built on these kingdom spouse marriages. So the Lord has called me to deliver kingdom spouse words, but that's not my primary ministry. Okay, my ministry is, is provision and I speak whatever the Lord wants me to speak. And not all my words are, are kingdom marriage, but hers are. So if you, I'm going to, I'm going to link her most current video. I'm going to go to her page. I'm going to link her most current video in my description box. And if you feel led, take it to the Lord in prayer. But if you feel led, go check out her ministry because she is, 
she's in it to win it guys <laughs> she's actually on this journey too she's on this journey and she is just she's helping so many people on this journey she is and she's faithful she's faithful she's consistent she's consistently uploading okay and she is consistently yeah she's just that's a word I got when I was writing down I'm like well what should I say about her the Lord says say she's consistent because she is <laughs> she's consistent she's confident she's confident and you need some confident people speaking into your life on this journey and she is flowing with the holy spirit guys she is flowing with the holy spirit and she's got great confidence doing it and she has a great attitude doing it too like i said she's on this journey too and it would be really easy for her to get in her flesh and you know and she is vulnerable she's she's not she has a great attitude but she's not faking it she's vulnerable she's like yeah this is hard it's hard for me too but she is she has so much joy beaming from her like she glows when she's giving her messages and she is just she's just so strong and confident and and she does um she does a lot of live videos, like live praying with people specifically about this, like praying for your your spouse. Like she gets in there and she prays with you. And I mean, girl goes to prayer, girl's going to war. She's not praying passively. She don't got a passive bone in her body. She is, <laughs> she is warring in the spirit when she is praying and she is on fire for Jesus Christ. She is on fire for Jesus Christ. And she can relate to you on this journey. And she also does, uh, she does a live prayer. She also does corporate fasting from time to time, specifically about this. I mean, it's not just fasting about just to fast. I mean, she's she's fasting specifically on these journey, on this journey. Because a lot of you guys, you're on, you're like in the similar wave. You know what I mean? Lord's pushing these out. Like he's launching people in waves. And you're going to, a lot of you will be in the same wave as her. So you're going to listen to a video and you're going to go, <laughs> Girl, that's exactly where I'm at. How did you know? <laughs> and it's because the Holy Spirit is, she's a, she's surrendered to the Holy Spirit and he is flowing through her. And she just has a lot of wisdom and revelation on this journey. Whereas the Lord's given me a handful of revelation wisdom, but she's got way more. She's got way more wisdom than I do on this journey. So I want you guys to pray and if you feel led, I want you to definitely go check out her her ministry, okay? Because I think it could I think it could really I think it could really bless you, okay? But yes, your person is ghosting you, but they are gonna turn into a human. <laughs> Keep praying for them. Don't get angry at them. And um, yeah, pray for them to just. Go to Jesus with those ghosts. They are being haunted, guys. There's they're being they're being tormented a lot in the spirit. That's why they need your prayers. They need your prayers. They need their your fasting to get delivered up from these demons that are trying to take them out. Because Satan knows the call on their life and he knows the anointing on your marriage. Do not let Satan delay your union. Do not let Satan turn you against your spouse. Your spouse is not your enemy. They're just really confused right now. <laughs> Have grace. Amen.